journey. Do you want to hear about our journey? All right. Well, we have to start in Exodus. Oh, I know. <laughs> Why are you starting in Exodus? Because it's your journey. Well, before the Israelites got to the Red Sea, even before they got to the Red Sea, as they left Egypt, we read in Exodus 13, and the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them along the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light that they might travel by day and by night. The pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night did not part depart from before the people. Well, why is that important? This is a story about God with us, right? About God being with us in the midst of struggle, in the midst of turmoil, in the, in the midst of a corrupt world, in the midst of a power that's trying to destroy you. God is with us. God is with the Israelites, and God is with us. And that's what the story is really about. I want my stool. All righty. So I'm going to settle in, because we're going to talk about God being with us in our daily lives, in our journeys. And, and so I'm going to use this story, which is a true story. I won't embellish too much. I say that because my friend from the Yukon said that when you say it was 36 below, you know, it was actually 36 below. You're supposed to say 40. You're supposed to make it sound worse than it was. Yeah. But we're not going to do that. We're going to stick to the facts. You know, the cool thing is that the Lord showed the Israelites the way to go. He didn't go behind them. He was in front of them, showing them the way to go, leading them on their journey. And it was so cool because he, he provided water from the rocks. When there was no way and they complained and they grumbled and they, what are we doing here? There's no water. Even though they grumbled, even though they complained, he provided water for them because he cared for them. You know, he provided food. He provided manna from heaven. He made sure that they were sustained because he was not going to forsake his children, not going to leave them alone, right? And it says even that while they're in the desert, their clothing and their shoes didn't wear out. He, by a, this great miraculous provision, he took care of that need because maybe there was just no other way to, to, to make more clothing where they were and, and the way they were traveling and, and how they were going. So he even provided for them something new for the people, which was the law of Moses. He was showing them how to live. This is my desire for you. This is how I desire for you to live. This is what I want for you as a people. And if you do these things, it will go well with you. It will go well with you, he said. And I think, well, I know in my life, the Lord does all this for them and he does it for us because he really loves us because we are his children and he cares for us and he, and he wants good things for us even though <laughs> we can be a stiff-necked and rebellious people right even though we can uh, grumble and complain and, and do all of that and get angry he still loves us you know and their their journey was not without trials and not without loss not without struggle. But the cool thing is, the Lord was constantly with them. He was always with them through all of that. And I guess my question today, and what I want to look at today is, how many of us feel and understand that truth, that God is with us, that he's guiding us, that he's watching over us, he's protecting us, he's sustaining us, he's, he's helping us through life. And, and so I, I want to talk a little bit about our journey, me and mine and Dennis's journey, and how we saw God's hand in it, guiding us and, and sustaining us and protecting us. And, and I think Dennis and I can both agree we didn't do everything right. We weren't as prepared as we should have been. Um, we, 
probably got a bit angrier. I know I did a few times and I should have. And so it's not just a story about God's provision, but it's a story also about how I saw my reactions to bad situations and how God really revealed I need change in my life in those regards, um, which is never really fun to deal with, you know, but it's a good thing to deal with. You know, the thing is, I, I learned a lot about myself on that journey. I, I learned a lot about how I can be really impatient, how I can get frustrated by things. And, and yet, at the same time, how I can really trust in God and have this incredible faith. And so I have this incredible faith, and yet then I'm worked up and I start to grumble. And, and it's like, if I've got this incredible faith, why am I even getting there? Why am I impatient? Why am I worrying? Why am I, when I can see the Lord working in so many amazing ways? And the truth of it is, you know, I thought of that thing, we walk by faith, not by sight. And I thought, well, we're driving by faith, not by sight. And, but there's an interesting part of that. We walk by faith, but we already know we have already experienced God's goodness. So on this trip, we're, we're driving, we're doing this journey by faith, but I've experienced God's miraculous provision and his protection and his sustaining power already a lot in my life. So my faith is built on, on that knowledge. It's, it's, it's not blind, really, because I already trust the Lord. I already have spent that time in a difficult place and he's taken me through it in some of those exact places, actually. And so, you know, it, it's a stressful journey getting on an airplane, meeting up with someone else in another place. I had to get to Puerto Vallarta. And if my flight's late, then I don't meet him. Yeah, nothing works. We don't get to Phoenix. So the whole point was we were going to Phoenix to bring his truck and trailer down here so that they have their stuff, you know, because they're essentially moving down, you know, at least part-time. So that was the goal. And uh, it's interesting. Every time I go through the border now or I get into the U.S., they pull me aside. Apparently, I'm, I'm a bad person because I tried to enter the U.S. a year and a half ago by the land crossing as a Canadian when you're only allowed as a Canadian to cross by air. But we thought we were, we had a reason that we were, had a reason to travel, an essential reason to travel. And we had a letter from our organization saying we had to get back to Mexico. We had to get our vehicle down there. And they got very angry with us because they don't like that. Um, so instead, we had to go back into Canada. I had to drive, Becca had to drive me two hours to Calgary. I had to fly 12 hours to Salt Lake and she had to drive 12 hours down by herself to meet me because she's also a US citizen, so she could go. And it's just the ludicrousness of it, right? That the nearest airport was two hours from that border. I'm like, it's two hours. Like, what's the, no, it's the law. And of course, right after that, a month later, it changed and I could have driven through. It's, it's somewhat ludicrous, right, in, in so many ways. But ever since then, I've been flagged as a malcontent. <laughs> so I just expect when I enter the US that I'm gonna, you know, get pulled aside and, and that's okay. But anyway, we got in there and, and everything was fine. They didn't even bother Dennis. I don't care about him. He looks so holy. <laughs> <laughs> they just let him right in. Um, so next thing we got to do, it's 113 degrees when we enter, get into Phoenix. And we have to prepare the trailer and the truck, hook it up, bring it up to where her mom and dad's are, do all this, get it ready. And we're like, how are we going to do this tomorrow in this heat? This is going to kill us. We're going to change a tire. We're going to fix lighting. We got to woke up in the morning, cloudy and overcast. Never got, got up even to 100 degrees. And the Lord blessed us so much. We got up at 5 a.m. By 10 a.m., we had everything done. I didn't think we were leaving that day. By 10 a.m., everything was done. And I'm, I'm looking at Dennis and I'm like, we can leave. This is amazing. So off we go get in the vehicle, pick a few things up on the way, get to the border. And uh, I don't know if you've been to the border bringing things down, bringing across items. They're, they can be really picky when you've got a 16 foot trailer loaded up. They can, 
But there again, God showed his grace to us. We paid a, a, a fee for, for duty, which wasn't that bad, you know, like it was reasonable. They didn't fight over it. They didn't, and in we went, we're like, woohoo, we're in Mexico. But then you got to drive 10 miles before you do your visa, yeah. right? <laughs> and, and register your truck. Visa's no problem. And unfortunately we didn't have the right paperwork for the truck. And so they're like, well, you can't come in. We've already paid for our visas. We paid for the, total, the, the duty on the item. We've done all this. So what do you do? What do you do as a believer? You pray, right? You, you, you just, Lord, I, I don't see how this is possible. They're telling us there's no way we're going in. There's no way. So you pray, Lord, you are the way maker. We've seen you do this before. Make a way where there is no way. Make a way. And so you, you wait and you struggle and you talk and you back and forth and you get your community to pray, right? You know, WhatsApp your community, help, pray for us. Isn't that the great thing? It's the one thing I do love about the technology as much as I struggle with all of the social media and everything. And I, I really have struggles with it to be able to do that. And I'm knowing that all these people around the globe almost are praying for us and providing solutions. And the Lord provided the solution. And so we were able to, we were there for five hours and it was hot and we were getting kind of miserable and frustrated and, and all the rest. But here I was okay. Here I was saying to Dennis, you know what? Just wait, this is gonna work. We're gonna get through. The Lord's gonna provide a way. Just, we just got to keep going. And sure enough, just before eight o'clock, we got the paperwork we needed. They accepted it. And we were able to get through. Praise the Lord. And so off we go to a hotel because now we're really exhausted and wore out and just stressed. And off the next morning on our trip. And what do you think? It's going to be no problem, right? We're all good. We're heading down through Mexico. <laughs> yep, sure. It's going to be great. Um, the great thing is, is when you have the Lord, when you have the presence of the Holy Spirit, you have this confidence uh, that in the midst of this dangerous place, and it, it can be kind of scary coming through Mexico, through Sonora, through Sinaloa, not the safest place in the world. And, and, and I hate to say it about Mexico, but the thing you got to worry about the most is the police and the border guards and the officials. And it's sad to me that that's true. The ones who are supposed to be protecting you and helping you often are the ones that you have to be the most concerned about um, and can cause you the most difficulty. So it's interesting because I love traveling with Dennis because he just prays. When I pray, we just pray and we praise the Lord, you know? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for, for that. And, and there's just that beautiful sense of um, being in the Lord together and, and giving things over to him and continually seeking him. And so as we went, you know, we knew there was going to be perils on the road, but we also knew that God would take care of us, that maybe we would go through difficulty and perils, but the Lord is with us. We're going to be okay, right? It's going to be all right. And one of the greatest perils when you're on a journey like this in a 28-year-old truck, which is a good old truck, right? Good old 350 Chevy. And, uh, but stuff breaks. Stuff can break. Guess what happened? Stuff broke. <laughs> but this is the cool part. If it would have broke 10, 15 minutes sooner or 10, 15 minutes later, we would have been in the middle of nowhere with no help on the side of the highway. So it's not like the Lord prevented the bearing going from in the idler wheel and the serpentine belt. But he made sure it happened right when we got into a town that actually had one guy who had the bearings, the belt, and the know-how to fix it. And what are the odds of that? Like, really, I've driven this journey many times. You're lucky to find any little in that stretch, anything. And here's this wonderful guy 
who uh, just digs into the motor. He's a, he's a parts guy, but he said, you're a mechanic? He goes, no, but I'll fix it. 25 minutes later, <laughs> replaces the bearing, out, you know, puts it all in, does everything, does it, all of it for like $60 US. You know, such a blessing, such a provision from the Lord. Um, and so when you see how the Lord in those little things even takes care of you, it's so cool. Right after it happened, though, it wasn't so cool because we're on the side of the road and I'm I'm kind of mad at him because they don't have an extra belt in the in the car. Not that it would have mattered because the bearing was gone. The belt wouldn't have done us any good. But I have this philosophy that I've learned as I've walked with Jesus. When you get into a tough spot and you, you don't know what to do, pray to God, but row to shore. Do you ever know that story about the guys in the boat? And there's a hole in the boat. And the one guy says, well, we just need to pray. And the other guy says, yeah, we need to pray. But let's start rowing to shore because maybe the Lord's going to give us the strength in our arms to actually get to shore before we sink. Maybe that's his provision, right? So, yeah, pray, but go forward. Do your utmost, do your best. So off we go. Now we got no water. So engines overheating, no power steering, all of that pulling the great big trailer. As soon as we go to move, this is before we're getting to the mechanic, obviously. We get into a line for a drug addiction check. Yeah. So they're like, okay, luckily we weren't in line too long. So the motor, I'm watching the temperature. Okay, it's not dangerous. It's not super overheating. They pull us over. Great. But as they're doing that, we had the time to look and there's like, there's an automotive place down there. Like something, right? So they go through. And, and this, I got to tell you, really kind of was weird for me. There was a guy who spoke great English. He was in California for a long time, one of the border guys. And he says to me, make sure you do not leave your cab while they're asking you to empty your pockets and check everything and ask you questions. And I said, why? He says, you need to watch them. He's one of them. He says, you need to watch them. I said, why is that? And he says, because when I was a teenager, I came down here and one of these guys threw a baggie on the floor and charged me with drug possession. And I'm like, why are you <laughs> like, like, they're one of you, like you're one of them. And he goes, yeah. I know, but be careful. Always, always, always watch. Do not allow them to enter your cab or go near anything without you being there watching them. Insist. Just a little lesson for you. If you're traveling through Mexico, don't say to them, no, that's okay. You can go with me, but I'm going to stand here and watch. Um, that's that kind of corruption because they want money, right? Now you got to pay them a bribe in order that you don't get thrown in jail. And luckily they were honest. We were good. They checked everything out, helped us stop traffic, helped us get across. That guy didn't have the parts we needed, but he was the one who knew where to go five blocks away. And he got on his motorbike and he crossed the traffic on the highway right in front of this check stopper before it stopped a semi with his motorbike so we could get in and followed him through the check stop. They waved us through again and down to this mechanic. So there we go. 25 minutes later, we're on our way. And I'm repenting of the fact that I got so angry about the bearing. You know that story, and I thought about that afterwards, of um, Jonah. And at the end of that story in Jonah, God provided a weed with leaves so that he would shade under the tree, you know, under the shade. And then, and then he sent a worm, and the worm ate, the, and then there was no shade. And, and he was so angry. And the Lord said, do you have the right, right to be angry about the weed? Yeah. I'm, and I thought, oh, man, that's me, isn't it? Wow. It's interesting how the Lord teaches you as you go about these things. Um, because in some ways, he gives and he takes away. And, and we're not supposed to be angry. We're supposed to move in, in, in loving acceptance of what the Lord has for us. So here we are going down the road, praising the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Because, I mean, really, it, it seemed hopeless. When it, in the moment, it seems hopeless, right? It just seems like there's no, there's no avenue of escape. There's no possibility here. 
he was going to have a bearing right on that, but it was really good. So find a hotel. Okay, so imagine you're pulling this great big trailer and Becca finds us a hotel in some little place past Los Moches, but you don't know if you can even park. And the streets are busy, it's Friday night, it, it's packed, and you're going on faith that you cannot have to park this thing on the street. And I wiggled my way into their little parking lot. Almost, it was so narrow, I could barely get in and managed to turn around and the guy comes out and he's like, what? What are you doing? He's taking up the whole parking lot. And I'm like, we have a reservation. <laughs> and he, Come with me. And so they put us in their back alley that's gated and closed. So we didn't have to unhook and we were out of everyone's way. And it was, it was absolutely a wonderful and a blessing. And, uh, and so you just, so these little things, they may not mean much to other people, but in the moment for you, as you're traveling and as you're going and you have these worries and stresses and, and they happen, you're reminded, oh, Lord, why did I doubt? Why did I worry? Why was I so concerned about the weed kind of thing? You know, whether it, it's good or bad, why am I worried? You got me, right? I'm your child. I, I, I should know this by now. You've, you've been teaching me this for a lot of years. Um, and so he, he kept teaching me, don't, don't get worked up. Don't get angry. And, you know, so as we went on that third day, how do you think the third day is going to go? Actually, not bad. But another check stop, another drug addiction stop in Nairi. Oh, pull over. Okay, All right, here we go again. And I have to tell you something. I, I am a little bit, um, I am ready to use my pastor title and missionary title to, to get so when they're really pushing and it's starting to go not so good, I wait till then and go. And when they say to me, "Okay, where, what are you doing? Where are you going?" I'm like, "Well, I'm a pastor. Me and my wife are missionaries. We work in Mexico with poor families and children." <laughs> <laughs> I throw that at them because because I can because it's true, and because the Lord works in it. And, and so I've watched it happen many times when they're going to start like really getting serious and tearing us apart. And then you watch the Lord and we pray, Lord, just let him let us go. These are not the drones you're looking for. Okay. Um, your Star Wars fans will get that. But this is the beautiful thing. The guy just looks at me, he turns around, he goes to open the trailer. He, he looks at me and he goes, just go, just go. But he sends his buddy over and his buddy says, hey, um, do you have some pops? And I said, well, no, he's, I said, you want money, money for, for some pop, refrescos. And he said, see, I said, yeah, I have money for refrescos. And I pull out my money's looking at my money and there's, you know, 500s and whatever. And look through, oh, I get down to a 50. I go, here, here's a 50 for pop. And he was like, he was not happy. I said, you said you wanted pop, right? This is enough for two or three. So is that sufficient or not? And he was just like, he didn't know what to do. <laughs> so I just said, okay, have a nice day. And we got in the truck and left. Well, and I've learned that I, I'm not going to allow these guys to bribe me. I've had it, I've had it happen enough times. And it, it's frustrating. I understand they don't get paid a lot of money. I understand all of that. But there's an element of justice and honor amongst this in the position that they hold and how they treat people. And so, uh, and so I'll push a little bit on that. He got what he asked for. And I gave him that. So on that day, the only other really frustrating thing, well, no, there was a whole bunch more. Dennis started calling them trolls instead of tolls. Because when you're pulling a trailer, it is shocking how much it costs you. It is shocking. Um, we paid as much as 750 pesos at one toll. You're going through 21 or 22 tolls from Nogales to here. And we didn't have enough money. We just kept running out of money. And we, you're trying to find ATMs and you're doing all this. And so then you're praying. And, and, 
And this is what I want to try to get across, right? That though we're in this world and it may seem insignificant, it's not insignificant to God. There's nothing too small for us to pray to him for. And so I think that's really the important lesson through this journey that I'm trying to portray. Be in constant prayer. Praise and prayer. Thanking him for his goodness and his provision and his mercy, just like the Israelites. And even when you grumble, this is, the, this is the part that I think really me and Dennis saw that even though we were, our behavior wasn't always the best or our reactions weren't always the best, we didn't make the best decisions. We weren't always perfectly prepared. The Lord was merciful. The Lord is merciful to his children and good because he loves us. He cares for us. And so even in those little things, out of nowhere, we were out of money. We're not going to make the next, and they don't take credit cards. You got to have cash. Out of nowhere, there's an ATM at a one gas station. You finally get the money we need, and off we go. And, and you know, there's not always money in the ATMs, right? That's no guarantee. So, so off we go, praising the Lord, thanking the Lord. But even in that, that day, two things really struck me. I had to walk a couple blocks across the street to get in an OXO so we could get some water and some juice. And I got to the door and in Sinaloa, they forced me to wear masks. And, 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 and so she's like, no, you can't come in. You don't have a mask. I said, well, I don't have one. And she goes, well, then you can't come in. And I, I walked away. I was really angry. Really angry. I had to walk all the way back to the truck, get my mask, come back, settle myself. Right? So, Okay. Get, get the juice, move on. Later that day, when we went to park by that ATM, it's this massive parking lot, huge. And I thought, okay, I can just park here, run in, we'll get the money and off. Oh no, this, you know, you've got the Mexican guy who runs the parking lot with the, he comes running over, no, you can't park here. I'm like, it's two minutes. Like, it's no big deal, right? Nobody, I mean, not in the way. No, you must go down there two, three blocks and park. And I got really angry. I said bad words. Like I was just so frustrated by, by the, ugh. he was doing his job. The lady in Oxford was doing her job. They weren't doing anything wrong. They weren't being unreasonable. But I was really worked up, you know? And I actually said some bad words and I can do that. I come out of a past where swearing is like second nature to me. And when I get worked up, Becca can attest, it can still come out. And, and so, uh, again, I'm just like, Lord, I'm so sorry. Why am I getting so frustrated? But you're so tired and you're just, it's a long journey. And then I think of the Israelites and they grumbled and they complained and they're walking through the desert and all these things, right, that they came against. And yet God was merciful. And that's really what the Lord taught me on this trip. He still doesn't expect me to be perfect. He still doesn't expect me to have everything prepared because we're human and, and we're not going to be, we're going to miss something. And even in the midst of all of that, he says, that's okay. I got you. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to make a way where there is no way. I'm going to, and, and, and my blessed son, I'm going to teach you through this how to be more gentle, how to be more patient, how to be more kind, how to be more generous. For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. I don't know why that's so, <laughs> I didn't have a lot of that this trip. But the Lord's teaching me. And I hope he's teaching you. I hope he's teaching you these things. Because if you're not growing in these things, if I'm not growing in these things, then we're like the Israelites who didn't make it. Who didn't follow the Lord. Who rejected him. Who built the altar to the, to the wrong God. Who weren't impacted by their lives, what God was doing. And that's not who he wants us to be. It's not what he wants. 
you know, and that's the great thing. He doesn't want us to be perfect. He's not asking us to be perfect. But he's asking us to depend on him, to lean on him, to trust in him, to walk in faith, to walk in that faith. And he's going, you know this, right? I keep doing this in your life. I keep taking care of you. I keep providing for you. I keep miraculously making things happen. Continue to walk. Because we're not walking in blind faith. He's asking us to, to go and, and walk you know, in places we haven't been maybe before, but in knowledge of his goodness and his mercy and the richness of his love to us. And that's so cool. He is our pillar of cloud by day and our pillar of fire by night, right? And that is, to me, such an amazing thing. You know, um, through, so through this journey, I just want to try to express to you like the things I guess that I've expressed, this, this love of the Lord for his children, even though they're all messed up. Even though they're all messed up, the love of the Lord for us, it's so cool. He's an such an act of God, alive, guiding us, teaching us. And this pillar of cloud by day and this pillar of fire by night, we still have. We still have. It's called the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit goes before us. The Holy Spirit guides us. He says he is our guide. He is our teacher. He is the one who convicts us when we're not doing well, right? And he is the one who empowers us, who empowers us to do better, who empowers us to be the children that God desires us to be, rich in mercy, just like him. Now, he doesn't have to do that. The Lord doesn't have to be that nice to us, I don't think. Well, maybe he does. Maybe it's part of his innate character that it's just who he is, right? That he loves us despite who we are, and he even loves those who are rejecting him. And that is the, really the, the end of the story, isn't it? That even though we were still in sin, yet he loves us. And that he made a way through his son, Jesus Christ, to bring us near to him, to bring us into relationship with him, to be good with God again. And that's the cool thing that, Again, he is the father who's not just sitting back in the chair, angry at the son. And well, if he comes back, then I'll maybe I'll deal with him. No, he's the God yearning, yearning, leaning out, eyes on the horizon, seeking the return of his son or his daughter, yearning for them to come. And then when he sees them, running to them. And what does it say in that story? about the prodigal son, he puts, he gets his best robe and puts a ring on his finger saying, essentially, you are my heir. And that's who we are, co-heirs with Christ, children in the family. And so we have nothing to fear. We have this blessed, blessed union through Christ with the Father. For he says, I am in him and him is in me and, and you are in me, all of us together.